Hey, welcome to part two. In the, the first part of our concert ticket tutorial, we got our whole base figured out. We've got our ribbons included, we've got our background, we've got this really nice angled line texture, we got our angled ribbon lines in, and we just started working with uh, our type. So going back to our type, we've got live in concert, we've got our artist name, we've got our opening act, and now we need to do our concert date, which you'll see on our final looking ticket. We've got each uh, day, month, and, um, and year, month, day, year, in the American way, um, in circles, all together, kind of lined up with all our text. So that's what we're gonna, what we're gonna take care of right now. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our ellipse tool and whenever you use the ellipse tool if you hold shift you'll get a perfect circle. So and it's the right color we're going to use this off-white color for our date circles and we need three of them so I'm going to hold alt and drag and then I'm going to hold shift to make it um, perfectly centered aligned and then we're going to do it one more time. Now I want uh, the right edge of my rightmost circle to line up with the right edge of my D, so I'm going to nudge it over just a little bit, but I don't really like how big these are right now, so I'm going to make them a little smaller, make this a little bigger, and space them out a little bit more. Now we need to distribute these circles so they're the same distance from each other. So I'm going to select them all, and then I'm going to come up here and click on this horizontal distribute center, and that makes them evenly distributed. Now, if I didn't hold shift when I was making copies of these, and like say this one was like kind of hanging up there, if I wanted them all to like match the center line, I could select them all and then click on this vertical align center, and now you've got it again. Cool. So now we're going to put in our date. So I'm going to grab my text tool. I'm going to type in 05 and it's in marketing script and we want this to also be gray. And especially when you're using kind of, um, this kind of has an italic feel, script feel. Uh, well it is a script, but whenever you're trying to align them in a shape, if you just rely on your align tools, it's never gonna look visually right. So you kind of have to uh, visually align this by yourself. Especially because like, so here's, we've got um, a zero, but a one is not as wide as a zero. So it's never gonna be consistent if you just kind of copy that way. That's why we did the circles first and now we're doing our numbers. So I'm gonna, that looks pretty good. So I want the same size font and color of this, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to hold Alt, I'm going to begin to drag, but I'm going to also hold Shift as I'm dragging. And I'm going to bring this to the second one, and then I'm going to do a third one. So for my date, I'm going to do the 17th. And then for my year, I'm going to do 14. So I'm going to fix my 14. And then my 17. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to group each one of these on its own. So wherever I'm going to hold Command and G. So now wherever the circle goes, the 5 goes too. Put that back. So I'm going to do the same thing for 17 and 14. Command G on a Mac, Control G on a PC. And I'm going to grab all of them and I'm going to group them all together. Okay, so now they'll move as one unit whenever I need to. That way I won't end up nudging one of these circles out of place. So they'll all always be evenly distributed and aligned. Now we're going to bring our type down. And we need this to follow the same kind of angle that everything else is. So we're going to double click on our shear tool, hit OK. So first I'm going to kind of center my main content and then I'm going to take care of this part. Okay. 
and then make Sunshine Sisters much smaller. So while we're trying to center this, it's probably a good idea to um, figure out where our perforation is going to be on our ticket. So we're going to need to draw a guideline for that. And all I need to do is click on the left ruler and drag a line out to about three and three quarter inches and then release. So that's going to be our main perforation line. So everything over here can be centered in this portion of our ticket. So that'll help when we're oops. hold shift when you're resizing and everything will scale proportionally so I want that right edge to kind of follow this whole side so that's kind of what I'm focusing on and I want um, I want it to take up a good good amount that looks good And now because we grouped Ben Howard in the last video, uh, whenever we move him, the shadow goes with him. So they'll never come apart that way. Actually, we can make opening width a little smaller. That's good. All right, cool. I'm happy with that. Let's draw our perforation line next. So we need a new layer. And we'll just call this perforation line, or just perforation. And I'm going to grab the line tool again using that um, backslash shortcut on the keyboard. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hold shift and drag a line all the way down. And we need a color for that. So make sure the stroke is right in front over here in your toolbox. Hit I, hold shift, and then click on your off-white color. And now let's go to the, the stroke window. And if you're ever missing any of these windows that I'm using, you can find them right under window. And like, here's the stroke. So if you don't see something over there, this is where to find it. So let's make the stroke for our perforation 0.75 points. And then we're going to make this a dash line. And we're going to input four points for the dash and three points for the gap. And now we need another line for our design we've got another one right next to it so in order to make a copy just using your keyboard with your first line selected hold alt and then click your arrow key I'm gonna click my left arrow key just once and then release alt anytime you hold alt and move something you're creating a copy so we only want one copy so we released alt and now we're just gonna hit the arrow key a few more times and we're gonna get rid of the dash line just by unchecking it in your stroke window. And that looks good. You can always turn off your guidelines um, by holding command in the colon key um, or control colon on a PC. So I'm put those back. Come back to your layers. I'm gonna lock that because I'm all done with those. I don't need them anymore. And I'm gonna drag it below my text layer. Coming back to my text layer, now I need to create my text for the right side of my ticket which is going to say the true wireless amphitheater. So let's set that text right now. So I'm going to grab my text tool. And I'm going to type out in all caps. And then I need a separate text for amphitheater. And this is going to be in lead gothic. And I want them to be perfectly stacked. So all I did was grab my text, drag it up holding the shift key so it's perfectly aligned, and then holding shift again, I stretched it out until I hit the right edge. Now we've got really nice stacked type. So I'm going to uh, make a copy again, hold shift. I'm holding alt and shift and I'm dragging. And now I need to type in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so this is going to be set in marketing script. And 
I don't want this to be all caps, so if you ever do this, you don't have to retype everything out. All I need, so I want the first letter of um, each of these words to be capitalized, but the rest to be lowercase. So if you ever run into this problem, it's really easy to fix it. Just with it selected, go up to type, change case, and choose title of the case. Title case just means the first letter of every word is capitalized. Click that, and that's exactly what we want. So now I'm just going to hold shift and scale it down so it looks stacked, and we're good. So this, um, the Lee Gothic text, we're going to apply the off-white color to, and then Atlanta, Georgia, we're going to keep that gray. Move it down, make it a little bigger, and apply the shear to it. Make sure you're still at negative 8 with a vertical axis. And we're good with our text here. All right, now we're on to our row and seat ribbons. And these are really fun because I kind of have that shadow going on and the depth. So let's put those on their own layer. So I'm just calling this row and seat. And in the same way we made um, ribbons earlier, I'm just going to use my rectangle tool. And this is going to be off-white. So that's pretty good width. So I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to zoom in close. And I see my little node here, so I'm going to hover above it. I'm going to hit the plus key on my keyboard, and then I'm just going to click. And then I'm going to use my up arrow key and nudge it until I'm happy. So that looks good. I'm going to bring it back over here. So we need, we need this ribbon to be underneath the big ribbon, but above this horizontal line. That's why we put them on two different layers, so you can be above one and below the other. So we need to be below, if you come over to your layer palette, we need to drag it below the ribbon layer, but we need to be above the horizontal line. So that is all you have to do, and then it's positioned exactly where we need it. So. This has a little bit of a, another faux drop shadow on it. And whenever you're working with a shape, all you have to do is click it, hold Alt, and then hit your arrow key once. And now we have a copy again. And I'm just going to nudge, hit my down arrow once, but I'm not touching Alt at all. So we're going to color this the gray. And we also want to set it to multiply so you'll be able to see it against the dark background. And we want this behind the first ribbon we drew. So all we have to do is hit Command, Shift, and then um, your left bracket in order to put it behind. But if, if you don't want to do that, you can always right click, arrange, and then send back. It does the same thing. Or send backward, actually. It's send backward will only send it behind the next item that um, is below it. So we're good. All right, let's put in our text, which is going to be not angled. So we're going to type out row in all caps. We're going to make this Lee Gothic. We're going to make this the gray. And then we're going to grab our ellipse tool, hold shift for that purple perfect circle again, and we're going to make this the same color as our ribbon, and now we're going to bring text. I need this in front, so I'm going to hold Command, Shift, and then my right bracket. You could hold Control, Shift, right bracket on a PC. Double click to edit. I'm going to type in 0, 8. And this is going to be the off-white color. That looks pretty good. I'm going to um, just align these two. There we go. That looks good. And now I need to make that fake shadow that's on there. So I'm just going to grab my pen tool. I'm going to click where it meets this horizontal line right here click there and I can go anywhere up here because this is behind the ribbon no one's gonna see where my other click is so I'm just gonna click up here and then click up here again 
and then kind of come like right here yeah there we go and I'm gonna make this 10% that looks like a shaft all right so we need one more of these so I'm gonna select all of this I'm gonna hold alt drag and then I'm gonna hit shift and that looks pretty good I'm gonna kind of keep an eye on my text where I'm aligning it so this part is a little bit inside of the left uh, rule line of invisible rule line so I'm gonna kind of do the same thing on the right side so I got some space here so obviously this needs to get brought up so that's a good place and we're going to change this to seat and i'm going to type in 12. make it look a little more centered that looks pretty good i'm actually gonna um bring this up a little all right that is our ticket uh, except we don't have our final paper texture and if you want I'm kind of OCD about this and you can do this if you want to I'm gonna do it just because I always do it so I'm gonna go into my ribbon layer and I'm just gonna put a clipping mask so everything is masked right around the bleed line which you really don't have to do this. This is only for, for looks. So I'm gonna make, uh, select everything, right click, make clipping mask, lock it again, go to my horizontal lines, do the same exact thing. If you do this, just always make sure that um, you're drawing your rectangle that it's going to be masked inside of all the way to your bleed line. You don't want to go to your document line, otherwise, what's the point in having a bleed, you know? Okay, looks great. All right, we just have one more, one more layer to make. I usually leave my text, um, and actually I'll leave this unlocked too, because if this gets handed off to anyone else to work with it, those are the layers that will need to be edited like this information will need to be edited but the background should remain the same the perforation line can be the same so I try and lock as many layers as I can so uh, there's less chance of nudging something that you don't want to nudge so I'm going to create one more new layer and call this paper texture I'm going to go file place choose my texture I need to rotate this 90 degrees and then I'm going to set it to multiply and I'm also going to put a clipping mask on this because it's pretty big compared to my ticket and I'm going to lock that I'm going to get rid of my little color guys and all you have to do is save it now and you can hand it off to a printer or someone else that needs to do some editing with it it's all set so great job if you made it this far the next video that i'm going to make will show you how to take this illustrator file and actually make it into a photoshop file if you'd prefer to have a photoshop file or if someone's asking for it and it will look exactly like this and you won't have to remake any of it so check that out if you're interested in that um, if you don't want to make this whole thing you just want the file uh, I'll also leave a link where you can where you can get that file if you want it. So thanks so much for for watching and hope you enjoyed it.